This episode of Capes and Lunatics is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Way Before the Bat. That's right. We're still here. Still alive and kicking. Unlike other shows I can mention. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I am Phil. Joining me as always, that mournful Superman fan over there. I am here. It is me, Tyler. I guess I am. Hmm. If Phil, if you're Alfred, who would that make me? Segel. Okay, I like it. I'll go with it. Right. I'll be single. Right, right. We both we both talk like Englishmen. Uh, oh, yeah. They do have some interesting accents. I mean, not to not to swerve too far from Pennyworth, but I think I, I don't know what I didn't look too closely, but I swear I saw a headline today that said, uh, "I guess Sci-Fi was complaining that they canceled Krypton because it was too expensive." I mean, it looks like an expensive show. Yeah, I, mean, I just wonder if they were just like, oh, it was, you know, it wasn't worth it for whatever ratings it was getting. So, I mean, probably. I mean, well, they probably put so much with, money into it, you know, previously because they what retold the whole thing. And and that's like what I, I've said to some people. And I'm like, yeah, I didn't check it out. I'm like, yeah, but the thing was, it was supposed to be this one show that was announced. Remember when it was announced, Phil? Yeah. Shortly after Gotham was announced, mm-hmm. and here we are. Five years later, and it's in season two. Yep. Took them. You know, we used to make jokes on Krypton Report when the show started because we started it to be kind of like we're going to talk about Krypton and we're going to talk about Supergirl. And we made jokes because every, like, we'd have all this news about Supergirl starting and then we'd be like, and nothing about Krypton. And then it was like here, there, then the trailer, then the trailer got pulled down Mm -hmm. and they pushed it out. So, I mean, the first season is off balance, but the second season was that they had their objective and knew what they're going to do. Why don't they just do a Superman show? I mean, yeah, you're still going to have to pay a bunch of big special effects, but, I mean, with Krypton, you have to build, like, a whole plan, you know, like a whole Yeah, a whole my, I, I just wonder if it's all tied up in some sort of, like, the TV thing. Like, you know, there's more stuff that's come out over the years about, like, Lois on Smallville. She was only supposed to be, like, in four episodes because of Superman Returns coming out, and just, like, the way they kind of like there's a really cool video essay about the Joker and Jeremiah from Gotham and how they got away with stuff and why they did what they did and just to dance around the like the the legal mm-hmm. stuff, you know. And I feel like that's the same thing with Superman. Like they only gave a couple episodes to be on Supergirl and now a little bit more. And I mean, like, but then it's weird because then like with Batman, like we had Gotham, we had Batman appear on Gotham. And then we got like the shadow Batman on uh, Titans. Mm-hmm. And then supposedly we might get a like shot of Batman on Batwoman. So who knows? I mean, well, I think they cast a Batman for season two of Titans, which is coming soon. They cast a Bruce Wayne. Uh, okay. They've yet to say if he'll actually be Batman. So we'll see. Anyway, <laughs> we're here to talk uh, episode five of Pennyworth. I keep wanting to call it Alfred Pennyworth. Shirley, Alfred B. Shirley Bassey, which we were talking before. It's like, why did they name it this? But I mean, because I looked it up. She's a singer. Yes. Dame Shirley Veronica Bassey, uh, DBE, is a Welsh singer whose career began in, in the mid 1950s. Best known both for her powerful voice and for recording the theme song to the James Bond films Goldfinger, Diamonds Are Forever, and Moonraker. Okay. I mean, that's cool. I just, I don't know. Maybe I just missed the connection. I, I don't know. It just kind of feels like. I mean, are they like? Are they trying to make some kind of connection to James Bond and Alfred? I mean, I don't know. It was kind of what I always felt like. This show is a little bit inspired by like a very Bond mm-hmm. style. So I, I don't know. But just like last week, it was like Lady Penelope, but yet nobody in it was named. So I don't know. Maybe it's just too. Uh, what do you call it? It's too over our heads, Phil. We're not classy enough to to get it. 
I was. I wonder. Oh, I didn't look it up. I wonder if um, Shirley Bassey, if there's any Shirley Bassey music in the episode. Which again, but still, why would you name it that? And like, I, I knew that I heard that name, but I didn't look it up. I was like, because I, I literally just watched this episode like 30 minutes ago. Like after like, because Janine was watching it with me, I wanted to make sure we were still going to record. I was like, okay, I'm going to finish this. And we did. And then I was like, all right. Oh, I just looked up Lady Penelope. And it, yeah. uh, Lady Penelope Crichton Ward is a fictional character introduced in the British mid 1960s Super Marion the Thon television series Thunderbirds. Okay. Yes. All right. So, do we have the title for next week's episode yet? Uh, we should. I mean, I would barely check my handy dandy time app. Uh, I know. I'm like, I mean, I'm kind of curious. I mean, there's there's an episode. Episode. we're already halfway there, so they should have. Titles. Right. It is weird that we're halfway there. Right. So we have Ooh. Pilot, the Leonardo's Darted, and then we have yes, Cecilia I Black. I do have titles. Okay, yeah. so now they're all female names. Celia Black, Jolie Christie, episode eight is Sandy Shaw, episode Alma Coogan. Yeah, and then Marianne. Marianne Faith. It all started with Martha Kane as a name. Oh, yeah. So well, I mean, it's not a name, but technically you could say the landlord's daughter is a female. It is. So the pilot, which every show, like, first episode's pilot, so. Yeah. Well, women can be pilots, too. So, haha, ha, Phil. Mm. So, yeah, so only uh, five more episodes this season. Yeah, it's kind of... Oh. I feel like this episode was kind of like a uh, not a reboot, but like definitely turned the show in a different direction. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, it looks like they uh, they're taking a week off after episode six, but that's Labor Day weekend, so that must be they must be taking that week off. So, what did you think about this episode? Uh, I mean, it started off predictably enough. You know, you know, Alfred was going to be in mourning and Okay, so Alfred sees basically the ghost of people. So yeah, like his he sees his friend Spanish. Yeah. Then he sees the woman he accidentally killed. Mm. Makes me wonder, did he accidentally kill Spanish? Or did he have to kill Spanish? Mm. Or for, or he's blaming himself for his death for some reason. Right. Why he sees him. you know, And, and I, I wonder that just because then he saw the woman he actually killed in the tea shop. Yeah. I'm just wondering, yeah, maybe Spanish, maybe he was just like, you know, uh, I wasn't watching his back if I would, he had, wouldn't have got shot or whatever. Exactly. So we get that, and we get, so we get a nice little story with the Ripper. Yep. Who, you know, starts taking Alfred in, on a run, basically getting him back on his feet and helps Alfred see that whoever killed her had a, something against him. Oh, yeah. And... Don't want to jump to the end, but I'm thinking the Ripper killed her, or someone in the Ripper's gang. Maybe because to get Alfred where they wanted him. Yeah, but I mean, Ripper shows up with those running shoes, and I think he said something like, "Oh, he used to run with his buddy Norris." I was like, "Who, Chuck?" Yeah, yes, Chuck's been around forever. So yeah, Chuck defies time and space. He does. Chuck Norris was still getting the Ripper, so I wonder, you know, if Alfred's gonna have to take him down eventually. Um, I would say, yeah, because of where things go. We, we get to see a lot of bit, a little bit of Martha Kane. Oh yeah. Interact with Thomas Wayne. Thomas Wayne's pretty dickish. I mean, I don't think they, I mean, you knew they were kind of working for whoever before, but I think, was this the first episode where they actually called it out that like they're working for the CIA? Well, Thomas is working for the CIA. Yeah, but and I kind of think that Martha. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking that she might not know. You know, like Maybe. she's a being. You know, like cause it seems like it's just a bunch of like they're playing each other. Yeah, because you know you find out he's a plant because we meet the the leader of the No Name League, and we see that there's you know threat. The No Name League and the Raven Society are fighting each other, and it's just a bunch of street people. Like it's really weird because at one moment it's like. You feel like there are these very vast, organized groups, and then other minute you just feel like they're a bunch of people like in a club. You know, well, I mean, it could be both because I mean, you always want you know some uh, somebody you can always write off, and you know, 
can't be connected to you. True, true. I mean, and then we do get to see once again, like the queen and the prime minister, which I'm not sure whose side the prime minister is really on. Like he's, I know he's not on the queen's side, but I mean, as far as uh, the others, I don't know who he's aligned with. Yeah. Oh, but everybody shows up for uh, Esme's funeral. Uh, Beth and uh, even Martha. Martha's all upset, you know, probably she she was making out with Alfred, uh, you know, right before Esme was killed. Because that's what Alfred says. He says, uh, you know, he was like, "It's my fault. I was with another woman." And Spanish says, "Oh, every man deserves a can't turn down a good plunge." So, and we see Alfred struggling with it. Um. It's interesting because we definitely see a decline in Baz and Dave Boy. Like, because I didn't see how many months, but it says blank months later. So there is a time jump in this episode. Um, I miss that too. It it was after the funeral and stuff, and it says blank months later. And then we get the scene of like the Raven Society people fighting the No Name League. Oh, yeah. And. Because then we see Dave Boy and Baz still working, but like Baz is now doing drugs. Yeah. Dave Boy don't care what he does. And Alfred's like, Alfred's just like, you know, he's about ready to die. His father's like shaving him and, you know, telling him to eat, and, you know. Yeah. His father's taking care of him, telling him to eat. And Alfred's having a psychotic breakdown. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's what we see in Spanish and stuff. Yeah. And. You know, the, the Ripper helps get him on. He says he owes him a favor. And Alfred's like, yeah, basically I'll do it. Whatever. Like, I do owe you a favor. Um, we find out that the No Name League uh, leaders want Thomas Wayne to set up the murder of the leader of the Raven Society, which is very weird because you would, we would have thought before, like they would have done that when they had Martha just find out the name. Yeah. But I guess... British people don't act like Americans. Or they wanted to see where everything was going. But even like uh, Thomas's CIA contact basically tells him, doesn't he tell him, he's like, yeah, we'd rather have, you know, we'd rather the, the uh, Ravens get taken out than the no name league. Yeah. So, you know, they have a, they arrange this dinner between the leader of the Raven Society and the leader of the no name league. And it's basically a very awkwardly done, um, I mean, awkwardly in the sense of just how the two leaders are talking to each other. You know, we have the doctor and we have the leaders of the No Name League just sitting there casually talking to each other. And we find out that Thomas Wayne basically hired Dave Boy to kill the leader of the no- of the Ravens, but he can't do it if her eyes are open looking at him. But then you know, she like shoots him and then like like is like saving him. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. She's a very conundrum of a character. And um, did, did I miss here or did they call her Gordon? Call her what? Gordon. I thought it was start with a G. Is like God, God, Lady Godly or God? Oh, I don't know. But I saw, I I thought I heard Gordon. So, but pro- I mean, maybe that was just. But I was like, no, don't do. <laughs> Yeah, don't tie it in that tight. Like, and that's that's one thing I've actually really liked is they haven't tried to tie everything in. Like, they've let it breathe. Yeah, because that's the other. I mean, that was Francis like, Gaunt. Who is it? Her name is Francis Gaunt. Okay, okay, good. It's not Gordon. Okay, maybe it's just the accent throwing me. But no, I like that they're not like have to, have to tie DC into this every two seconds because I think if there was a weak point, the Gotham and even the like Krypton, it's like oh, we got to you know. Yeah, we gotta we gotta tie in stuff that makes stuff fit. Um, so Dave Boy, you know, gets shot in the stomach, and then she tries to help him, but then Alfred pops out with a mask over his head because the Ripper set him in there to kill the leader mm-hmm. of the No Name, blows his head off. Oh my lord! And you see it. I mean, all you see is like the bottom teeth left from a sawed-off shotgun he borrowed from the. The barkeep. That Heck he yeah. Smoked. Um. Oh, that's a that's a great scene when he picks up Dave Boy and like he shoots the one guy with his with his uh, sawed off on the steps, and then another guy's coming down the steps. He turns around so Dave Boy can shoot him while he's still holding him. And but it's just a cluster. Mm. Excuse me. 
and but it's it's trippy because you know then you have Alfred take Dave Boy back to the bar, mm-hmm. and basically they call in a doctor, and he's Dave Boy's laying there. Alfred's talking to I can't remember her name, the barkeep's daughter. Oh yes, talking the, to her. Yeah, he was talking to her. Oh, he talked her brain that buddy. And then he took a plunge. Yes, he did. Uh, Dave Boy's dying on the on the on the table. Alfred's in the back taking a plunge with the. I guess you could say. starter. I guess you could say you know once he got back in the swing of things with the action and everything you know. He wanted to live again. Yeah, he did, and that was a very. I was like, wow. I mean, he's not really doing anything wrong unless he's just using her, which that suck, Alfred. Don't be like that. Oh, wow. Uh, Sandra, the bar name. Sandra. Bar name okay. Sandra. Yeah. I know it started with the S. I just couldn't remember. I actually have to watch this show sometimes with, I watch it with the subtitles on or not subtitles, but like the caption because yeah. they speak such English English that sometimes I miss some of the things they say. Well, I usually have to leave a page or something open because I can't remember half these names. Yeah. That's another thing because they talk. But so, you know, that, that happens. So that sets up that we got, you know, uh, the leader of the no name league is dead. His wife's taking over, but then you find out his wife was like is sleeping, sleeping with the Ripper. With the Ripper. And that he helped orchestrate it. So it makes you wonder if A, the Ripper, like I said, killed Esme so they could get Alfred in the place where they wanted him. And B, was the Ripper actually helping Alfred? Um, or he just wanted to use him for this. Probably, I probably wanted to use them, and I, I wonder if the Ripper is like trying to take, you know, eventually wants to take control of both the No Name uh, League and the Ravens, maybe. Uh, I, very interesting, or at least eliminate one um, side and take control of the other. So that's the main story, and then we get the Lord Harwood stuff, which is just oh, weird. My Lord. Yeah, Bet picks up uh, all old No Nose uh, Harwood on the street. <laughs> I paid attention. Like his nose in the beginning looked like they just put black paint on his nose and shattered it to make yeah. it look like it was gone. But then later, like it's a full on prosthetic when he's at the dinner table. Oh yeah, because it's a hole. <laughs> it looks like a hole. Yeah, and like, and then as they chopped off his feet, like I forgot they chopped off part of his feet and everything. Oh, and yeah. I was like, this is like the part I had this my wife. Like this is the weird part. Like this is where the show feels like Gotham in that like. There's just some odd, weird stuff. Like, the old man in his leather underwear and the old lady. And I'm like, I'm like I don't know, Jania. These people are weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I was just like, Ugh. And then the, the awkward uh, conversation slash scene between Thomas Wayne, Dave Boy, and Paz. Where they're sitting there with the tassel dancers right behind them. Oh, that's right. No nipple this time. They're all tassels. I think and it was just awful. They're just dancing and they're just sitting there trying to talk about killing somebody. And I'm like, but it is interesting because. Uh, oh, there was one scene. I forget. I think it was later on. Like, I think it's when Alfred comes into the club. Uh, you, if you look at over to the one yep. side, there's a guy in a booth. Yeah, the girl's just like. Yep. I, I, I had to point that out. She was like, wow. I was that, like, wow, uh, that guy's open. Wow. Some, uh, she's, she's, some, uh, nodding, she's, nodding, she's nodding yes very, very vigorously in, in public. And uh, she must be praying. Um, Doing her impression but, of a chicken eating. But what I think, <laughs> what I think, like, if you listen to the dialogue as he says, like, the establishment's gone downhill. Oh, yeah. You know, and I think, you know, Baz, like, it's, it's all in that part of. The establishment, the, it looks like it's lost its class. They say hard times. It's now becoming basically more just like a brothel. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, like he says, Bass is doing cocaine in the back. Well, yeah, because Alfred's been gone. He hasn't been there to keep the riffraff out. Yeah, you know, and yeah, Baz is doing drugs. And like a Dave Boy's probably do, taking jobs. So he's probably not there half the time. So it's definitely just it shows like the decline of that and what Alfred meant to that place mm-hmm. and his friends. So it's very interesting. I mean, I'm liking the show because at any point you can just kind of stop 
and be like, oh, that's where that started. And then you have the idea like, okay, they eventually get back together. I would like to see more camaraderie between like Alfred, Martha, and Thomas, like really start to form that bond. We got five episodes left and we don't know if there's a season two or anything. So I'd look, I'd like to at least have a feeling of that bond started. Um, Cause I don't want to get, you know, cliffhanger upon cliffhanger with like a, you know, a triple cliffhanger. And then the show gets canceled. I'm looking at yeah. you. Yeah, I wonder what the ratings are. Because I wonder if he, you know, because a lot of people have to pay like extra for ethics. I wonder if they've been pulling the people in or. Right. Like, and you know, and I work for Spectrum and people, people like that channel. It's been weird. Like I've never really yeah. thought much of it, but people have said they like that channel and that, uh, you know, they have to pay for it in different packages. So I, I wonder because it's a very cinematic show. Mm-hmm. And I wonder like what the budget and stuff is on it. I mean, yeah, it is, it is shot very beautifully, but it's like, again, you really don't need a lot of special effects, uh, you know, aside from like, no, no gunfire. Yeah. But just like, like you said, the sh- it shot the, uh, the structure, the acting, you know, it's all top notch. The lighting mm-hmm. is very, <laughs> yeah, it's almost, it's kind of cinematic. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why like, it can't be cheap, but I don't know. I'm wondering because I like, I just, I don't want to end this show. Like if it's only one season yeah. feeling like, Oh, there's so much more. I at least want to have some sort of sense of this relationship built between Thomas, Alfred and Martha. Yeah. Uh, with like some nods to the future. Cause I'm really, really hurt by the end of Krypton where they just left me with like, three different cliffhangers. I know. That's what I was wondering. I was going to say, I mean, would sci-fi or somebody at least give them like a two hour movie or something to wrap stuff up. See, I would love like a two hour movie. They do just kind of, they used, they did with, uh, Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. You know, um, Firefly. Well, Firefly didn't, it got an actual, it got an actual movie through universal. Yeah. yeah. And Fox had the, but, uh, Battlestar, they did like movies alongside of the series and, you know, something like that just to kind of wrap up the story because no spoilers, but there was, like, I mean, there's some serious like cliffhangers and stuff that were led into there. So that's what I'm saying that, uh, yeah, I saw that article today. They were saying that, yeah, Krypton was way expensive. That's, I was going to say at least Pennyworth. Yeah, they're shooting it good, but at least it's all like most of it's like practical stuff. All you need is like, you know, gunfire and bullet you know blood and i mean the sets the sets are pretty simple alfred's house uh the pub yeah club and then like you need like a big room and then you can redress the room to whatever you need so i don't know but i mean you have to you have to make it look old but again it's you know it's a period piece there's no cell phones and you know no computers and stuff this is all very true so and then okay so like I, Janine and I were watching. I was talking. I was like, you know, they never, they never say the date. They keep it vague, and we know that's been like a thing of the show. But like when they're talking about like ten, like a thousand pounds, I'm like, that's not that much. The way they're talking, you know, like even if I look, I think I, I looked up like a thousand pounds, um, in British money. Like now is like twelve hundred dollars. I think mm. so. Twelve hundred dollars. Back then, like, what would twelve hundred dollars be like in the U.S. today? So I don't know. Just kind of trying to give an idea, you know? Yeah, I don't know. Because I'm like, it just the way they talk sometimes. I'm all. I always told you, I like in uh, uh, shows where they don't talk figures. So yeah, yeah. I mean, again, it's you can always say it's like an alternate. You know, it's an alternate timeline, or again, they keep it vague on the ear. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Very weird. Again, it, like I think if we said this last week too, there wasn't like a lot that happened, but it was like a lot of it was just like Elford getting out of his funk because it was very weird. Because you know, sort of we got a lot of that bet stuff at the beginning with uh, you know Lord Harwood and stuff, and then so okay, so. Twelve thousand dollars in nineteen sixty five is kind of where I was shooting at, even yeah. though it's not an exact time. We were worth roughly ninety thousand ninety-three thousand dollars. So, I mean, you know, that's that's significant, I guess. But I don't know. It's just 
they talk like it's a lot of money, and I'm like, okay, is it? Mm. But I mean, yeah, a lot happened, but it was like building and placing the pieces. Um, but I really felt like just like I really don't care about the Harwood story. Like, it's just kind of weird, and I don't really I don't care what happens. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> But just, I, I, it was nice that like you know, El, you know, Alfred's dad was actually taking care of him. I thought he was gonna like yell at him, and be like, "I I love that." Cause I, I think yeah. I think Esme melted him. Like she got to him. Oh, you could tell, yeah, because you said we, they they did that time jump, and he was basically just he was ready to die too. And you know, I I like that. You know, he had grown to care for her, and then she's just gone. And didn't Beth say she saw who killed her and it was like a man and a woman or something? She was talking like that and I, I was kind of hoping that maybe Beth's going to track down the killer too. Like, I just didn't know if someone was going to like try to convince Alfred it was like the, you know, Thomas and Martha at some point or something. I'm, I'm intrigued to see if like maybe Beth discovers it's the Ripper and Alfred's like, no, it can't be. It's, it wouldn't be. And then he has to go against him or something. Oh yeah, it could be the Ripper and uh, yeah, the uh, former leader's wife. Yeah, well, they said they, they uh, whoever it was took her ring too. Yeah, I mean, of course they're going to make it look like a burglary. That's the co- greatest cover up. You bust in the door. Like first, I watch a lot of TV. People, okay, first you get in like the person with keys because they said something about having keys. You murder the person, then you go out. You break down the door so it looks like you have a breaking and entering. And then, you know, you take, you knock some stuff over, you take some things. So it just looks like a robbery gone wrong. Okay. All you have to do is watch some CSI. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I think Alfred was just so overtaken by grief. Like, he didn't put the pieces in his mind that someone would want to kill her to get to him. But I'm trying to remember, too, is like, when the Ripper was playing with his dead bodies when we first see him, was he taking stuff off the body? Because I was going to say, could he maybe have taken the ring as like a sick... Uh... Maybe like a trophy? Like he has yeah. it somewhere. It's possible. Um, you know, we got, we got an interesting dialogue scene between the Ripper and um, Alfred where he talks about uh, who, who, who hates you. And Alfred, you know, he's even asking around, like, who, who hate me? Who would hate me? Mm-hmm. And everyone's like, oh, nobody, nobody, you know? So it just kind of makes you think, like, who would hate Alfred? And maybe it is the Ripper. I mean, he could still hold a grudge for, you know, driving his nephew out of town. Exactly. Even though the nephew was ready to, uh, you know, turn on him, but still. that That's what I'm intrigued by. Yeah. Or unless it's like the, you know, the Ripper's sister or whatever, you know. Oh, the mother? Yeah. I mean, that would be... It would make sense. So... But I'm... I'm intrigued. Like, I'm in till You know, I'm going to finish out the season because oh, yeah. even... It's interesting that it's just... It's just comic booky enough. Like, with enough DC stuff to be like, oh, okay, cool, cool. And just enough not for me to, like... Do I need, do I need to know this person? What What is this? Who is this? So, I like it's even if it wasn't Alfred, say Alfred Pennyworth, it's an enjoyable show on its own. Oh yeah, just as like a alternate timeline, uh, spy esque kind of mystery thriller, especially like British show. Like I was going to recommend it to my mom, and then it got like a little more graphic and stuff. And I was like, nope, nope, not going to because then my mom will probably hate it, and then it'll ruin my enjoyment. So, no. but that happens sometimes. Mom, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. Mama, didn't mean to make you cry. I got texting him like, "What you talking about, son?" Be like, "Uh oh." Your mom likes Mr. T. Uh, yeah. All right. So, all right. If you had to give this episode a grade, what would you give it? On a ten point scale. Yeah, or a letter grade, whatever you want to do. I was like using IMDb 10 points because I feel like you have 
more room. Yeah. Buckshul, uh, like I think it was just like a four star or a three. Yeah. Cause then everything comes down to like just, or a five star. It just comes down to like being threes. And I'm like, ah, uh, this one, uh, I don't know. I'd do like a 7.5. Yeah. 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 To, to an eight. Cause like it was good, but I felt like most of it was well, a lot of it. Yeah. We had to, you know, we had to wait for L for it to get going. So yeah, like it was like we had, you know, for a show, we're only five episodes in. That's like a big, like mid season. I mean, that, you know, if you were in another show where you have like 22 episodes, you've already got half your season to get to know this character for that kind of an arc. But I felt like this one was almost, like I said, a, uh, not a reboot, but like it was, it redefined the series because it like changed. Uh, you know, it's no more like, you know, Alfred trying to work for the government and keep, cause I kind of expected a few more episodes of like him working for Martha. And maybe even Esme getting jealous or finding out he's working mm. for a woman. And then, you know, that kind of thing. But no, they just killed her. Like I figured that. Esme was going to die. I just didn't think this soon. Right. We knew yeah. she was going to die. Like, that was given. Like, uh, but we just didn't know when. I did. So I just kind of thought it would I didn't go even on know a little it was going to be in the first season. But yeah, it was like episode four. And I'm like, and that's why I say, like, if they're going to do that and that kind of a pacing where they're not going to hold things back. Um, I really would like to see some speed up the pacing with the relationship of Alfred and the Waynes or Alfred, Martha and Thomas. Like that way, if this is where it ends, I feel like I got my satisfying like story. Yeah. But I just, I always, I wonder if like Krypton was like doing cliffhangers. So they're like, Oh yeah, they, they're not going to cancel us, you know, cause they're going to, you know, people are going to want to see how this ends. And I, but like care. I said, like if, I've been rewatching, and I brought this up before. Like, I've been rewatching The Flash since the, I started season one, and I've already burned through season one, two, and I'm halfway through season three. If you would have canceled The Flash after season one, it leaves on a cliffhanger, but you really feel like you got The yeah. Flash because you get, you got so many of his great villains, you got so many great stories, and then you have you conclude with the great arc of the Reverse Flash that. Uh, if that was the only season, you could have walked away oh, yeah, satisfied. Season, you would have won in season more. one too. I mean, so. it ended with that vortex. You could have just, you know, it was basically him running up. You could have been like, "Oh, well, he closed the vortex." Yeah, as I'm saying, like it, it ends where you want more, but it ends with the idea of you have a full story. And you find you 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 could leave satisfied. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. If, Unlike Swamp I, Thing, I don't know if it was that way in season one, but I mean, eventually, I mean, the Flash came to become. I think it's like the the biggest rated thing on the CW. Yeah, I mean, I think it had the biggest premiere the CW's ever had. Yeah, I think so. And rewatching it's just renewed my love for the show. That's another story. Oh, yeah. Can't wait for Crisis. Yes. Yes. Probably going to get your Supergirl. Everyone's probably going to be on the same Earth. Oh, dude, that's, you know, that's the smartest thing for them to do would be to put it on one Earth if you're going to do a Crisis event. Because there's a lot more stories you can you can like deal with having one Earth just to kind of shake it up and like put uh, vigor in all the series. Yeah, I mean that's gonna be the big cliffhanger because I I mean they're doing like three episodes before the holidays and then when they come back they're doing the last two so it's probably gonna be like it's look like the whole multiverse gets destroyed then when they come back it's gonna be like oh, everyone's on one Earth and then my 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 thought is like there's gonna be like these mini arcs before crisis that'll get wrapped up and then we'll get like basically a soft reboot of this of the shows and series after crisis well, I think I saw somewhere they were saying i think crisis is going to affect the flash almost the whole season so yeah yeah i mean that because that's where it's starting from and then you know there's what one episode of arrow or something after crisis Maybe. probably to wrap it probably to, you know just be the you final know, I, episode. and then um if it's like it probably Batwoman, isn't one of the final episode to be in the middle of the crossover right I think Batwoman I read is like the f- building up to Crisis. All the episodes of Batwoman's kind of like the prequel to the episode we met her uh, in Elseworlds, maybe. and then her Crisis episode is like the first time we're in like the current time. That's interesting. I read that somewhere. I gotta find that. Um, yeah, Sunday nights it's Batwoman followed by Supergirl. Which uh, poor Supergirl, eventually she's gonna be up against like Walking Dead and Sunday Night Football and stuff. Yeah. Well. For real, but but it, that's our predictions. I, I'm curious to see how Crisis affects Black Lightning. 
now that they said that he's going to be part of it, um, where does that put him? Mm-hmm. You know, like is, he's going to be part of it, doesn't? But his show's not supposed to be part of it. So, what does that mean? <laughs> so, but I feel like, uh, what do you call it? We should have a special episode, Phil, where we just talk crisis before everything starts in October. Predictions, thoughts, hopes, dreams that probably won't happen. Well, I know. I think I think last year we did that. I mean, I'll talk to Lil. I think last year, I, th- I think we talked, well, well, we were, we've been doing the Arrowverse stuff more and more, but uh, we're at least going to do something for uh, maybe the premieres and stuff. Because, like, we've had a conversation about how what I think is going to happen on the in crisis doesn't definitely necessarily mean what I want to happen. Like, cause every time I bring it up, my co-host James is always mad <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that's what I want to happen. I just think that's what they would do. Yeah. But I just want to see one shot of like all these people like looking at a red sky. And I'm just saying, I'm just saying, screw it. Just get like two seconds of Cameron cuff looking at a red sky Get me Ben McKenzie looking at a red say, sky. I was gonna say we're gonna get Penny or we're gonna get Alfred looking at the red sky. I'm saying, get get Alfred looking up at a red sky. Um, you know, it, it think fifth dimensionally is touching all time and space. So, um, get Swamp Thing looking at the red sky. Just and then you know just let's just throw it all in together. Because we, we ha- okay, Phil, I'm gonna pick your brain for a quick second, then I'll let, well, we can end this. <sighs> Out of all the current live action DC shows, if I'm not mistaken, we haven't had a repeat of a hero yet, have we? Uh, I don't think. Villains, we've seen, you know, d- we've seen multiple villains. Like, you know, we, uh, like, you know, especially now, like with Titans and all them, like they're redoing villains that, like Deathstroke, for example. But we've never seen a hero repeat yet. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think so. I can't think of any. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, unless you want to say Cyborg, because he was on Smallville and then he was in Doom Patrol. Well, Smallville don't count. Oh, that, that's I never thought you'd say that. Well, Smallville's the best, but I'm just saying, like, since era oh, when okay. all these yeah. things started, yeah. yeah, Smallville don't count. Cause, um, cause part of my, in my, in my brain back here, I kind of have, uh, the old 90s Flash and Smallville on the same earth. Yeah. Since we actually never got Barry Allen, but we got Bart. Yeah. So that's my canon. That's just my head canon. Um, so I'm just, I was just thinking that the other day when we were talking about why not have Kid Flash on, you know, Titans. And I'm like, and then I was, we were talking. I was like, I don't think they've ever repeated a hero yet. Uh-uh. Yeah, he's so. Superboy on Titans. Yeah, and he's not been on anything else. Uh-uh. But all right, that was my last pick of your brain. I mean, I'll you, the two versions of Superboy. You might get Connor on uh, Titans, and then uh, and John on Supergirl, yeah. which I really hope they do. So they could, <gasps> they could make him uh, Brandon Routh's son, since he's going to be Kingdom Come Superman. No, don't do it. Don't, don't, don't. Yeah, but it's like Lois was just pregnant, what, last season? So it's like you can't have like a, they can't have like a 10 year old already. Uh, Phil, we're talking about a show with a talking gorilla and shark. There's time paradoxes, there's black holes, there's crisis, and there's Kryptonian science. Okay. I know. For all we know, she could give birth to him and then his human sails and his Kryptonian sails on Argo City. Once he hits Earth, he causes him to rapidly grow. Okay. Okay. Fine. I can I can write it. Okay. <laughs> Just, but, all right. So we done. Yeah, we done. All right. And speaking of crisis, we uh, Lilf and I just uh, did a three part crisis special on uh, comic capers over on Capes and Lunatics and the rest of the, which is great for anybody out there, like just to check out to catch up, just to kind of have your comic background. Oh, yeah. Of of what's going on before the crisis. Just if you want to know what that story was and the rest of the year, we're going to be doing some, uh, flat, uh, yeah, flash and, uh, Supergirl, Batwoman and green arrow episodes, like comic book wise. So check all those out, get up there before the uh, crossover. All right. So send your thoughts on Pennyworth. Cause 
I know. I mean, you're you're here for the rest of the season, right? Yeah. All right. So we're going to be doing this. For, uh, what five more weeks? Like I said, it looks like on the schedule, it looks like they're skipping uh, Labor Day weekend. But uh, besides that, they're going straight on till the end. So send us your thoughts, Capes and Lunatics at gmail dot com. Uh, follow us on Facebook, facebook dot com slash Capes and Lunatics at Capes Lunatics on Twitter. Follow Capes and Lunatics on Instagram. Uh, check out work in progress, capesandlunatics.org. Subscribe to the Capes and Lunatics YouTube, our weekly newsletter, capesandlunatics.home.blog. Call the voicemail, 614-382-2737. That's 614-38CAPES. And watch us live on our Facebook, our Twitter, and at getvocal, V-O-K-L dot com. And Tyler Patrick, where can people get a hold of you? Um, you can get a hold of me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Gmail at JTY Patrick. I'm also the host of the Krypton Report podcast. As you heard us talking, we talk about Krypton, but not for much longer. And uh, Supergirl and anything Superman related. I going to say, send those flowers to <laughs> Krypton Report. Oh, man, I'm bummed. Yeah. But what can you do?